mean, both times you faced him, I know you had a pick each game. Did you, were you matched up against him at the time? Um, I've guarded him in, in those games, but when I, when I got the interceptions, I don't, it was more, I, I want to say Tyler Vaughn's probably and Drake London. Um, but yeah, he's, you know, he's a dog, uh, much respect to him, but now I'm coming ready to play too. What is it about his game that makes him difficult to cover? Uh, I would just say his his confidence. He's a, he a confident player. Um, he's, he's smart also. Um, he he know how to use his leverage uh, and he know how to get open. Jared Goff does a, a great job of uh, finding a way for him to get open and throwing him open. Kyle uh, just was talking about Jawan. Pushed the DB into the Gatorade <laughs> on, the, on the sideline. Yeah. And Kyle mentioned that even at practice he does that. He said last year the entire defense tried to fight him at one point. <laughs> What's it like from your perspective as a DB? Oh, um, you know, um, Jawan is the same person every day. So it's like, it's hard to even get mad, you know, at practice when, you know, he does stuff like that. But as you can see, it it transfers over to the game. So that's him every day. So um, it just shows how competitive he is. You know, I, I, um, I got much respect for him. How often do you face Brandon Ryan? You can practice it. How much does that, has that daily battle improved you? I know it's yeah, um, I face, he lines up mostly like on my side. So um, I would say about probably 70% 70, 70 of the time. Um, he definitely helped me get, got way better. You know, uh, just facing him in practice, you know, sharpening my tools. So now when I face, you know, other receivers, that's nearly not as good as him. It just, it's like, it's like practice. Demo, how do you think the rest of the NFL views you and Mooney as a cornerback duo at this point after a successful season? Uh, I'm not really sure because I feel like we still don't get the credit that we deserve. I mean, they always gonna give it to the rush. Like I know we we have a great rush, but at corner you still got to line up and you still got to backpedal, stay square, and make those plays. So I just I just feel like we don't get the credit that we deserve. When you face a quarterback like Goff, who's as accurate as anybody in football when he's on, yeah. Kind of what are the keys to kind of preventing that when he can just drop it in the bucket like that? Uh, really sticky coverage and uh, just getting them off the spot, making them uncomfortable, um, getting our hands on the receivers. Um, and just try to eliminate them from the game. I'm sure you've seen some of the clips of Dan Campbell that float around social media and just, he's an aggressive motivator. What, what do you think about some of the stuff he says and what kind of coach he is? Um, I, can, I can tell that he's an aggressive coach. Um, he gonna, he gonna uh, preach to his team for them to come in and uh, be physical, be as physical as they can. Because I feel like the teams that, you know, that that competes with us, you know, you got to be ready for that, that challenge. Have you gone up against Coach who goes for it at offense, he goes on fourth down, is that just the change how you defend on third down, knowing that they might be, you're not going for first down, is that really getting a better position there? Yo, uh, I, I just feel we 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 gonna have to win first and second down before it even gets to there. You know, make it a long, make it a third and long situation, and um, and just win. Demo Juice was really uh, emotional last week. Almost had tears in his eyes about getting back to the NFC Championship on the doorstep of the Super Bowl. Where are you as far as emotions and kind of how do you balance those as you're one game away from the ultimate prize? Um, this is my third year here, and this is the third time we've been in the NFC. So I feel like. Um, this is we 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 have to win it. Like this, like I'm gonna give it my all. Um, I just want to win. Yeah, that, that was quite the two play stretch you had back to back the other night, where you pushed Love out of bounds, and the next yeah. play you broke up that pass with a big hit. Did you enjoy that physicality as much as uh, you do just kind of being in coverage, maybe? Oh yeah. Um, I I just went in the mindset with trying to be the tone setter uh, of the game and. Um, I kind of seen how it was going, like it wasn't stuff wasn't really going our way. So I felt like if I if I was able to do something for the team and try to make a play or keep making plays if they kept coming my way, um, and then it seemed like it was working for me. Yes. Do you yeah. talk yeah. trash on the field? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I'm I'm an open book on the field. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel like that's. I feel like you got to kind of talk trash in this league, you know, kind of bring out that confidence, that swag. You know, I mean, uh, Deion Sanders did it, you know, and look at him. He's one of the greatest. So, I mean, I don't knock people for talking trash, but it's never personal. But, you know, 
Do you remember doing it in that first game? That, that would have been your first game, right, against the Lions? Yeah. Did you oh, yeah. No, nah, I actually, I didn't. That was the first game I ever played that I really didn't say nothing. I didn't say nothing. I, I, I feel like that was my first game. I had to earn my stripes before I say something. I'm saying Nick, so. Nick Bosa described you as kind of a rabid dog. Yeah. At times. <laughs> would you say that's accurate? Yeah, yeah that's pretty accurate. Good. It's been a lot of times he had to calm me down and tell him, we need you, we need you. Just chill out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Since I was first in the league, it's it's really just a one week mentality, and you just got to keep thinking of this as just the next game. I mean, it's I mean it is a huge game, and you know it's a win, move on, or lose, go home sort of situation. But you just can't you can't put too much stress on yourself, but you also have to just make sure you're doing your job. Who are the guys that you've identified as the game changers on that Lions front? I, I mean, I feel like they all can make plays. Um, Obviously, 97's a you know their their guy. Um, every, every team's got one, two, three of those guys. Uh, you just got to make sure you have a plan for them. As a guy who's been around this league for a little bit, what's it like seeing the Lions' name in the NFC Championship and kind of the turnaround that they've had? No, I mean it's great. I'm, I mean I'm I'm really happy for their franchise. Uh, you always want everyone to win, unless they're your opponent. So. Uh, obviously, we got to get in here and handle business. As a, as a lineman that protects for, for Brock Purdy, and there's a lot of national narrative, but maybe some slander towards him, does that fire up and kind of make you mad? I honestly don't even know half of that <laughs> stuff that's going on, to be honest. I try and stay off the internet and all the news sources as much <laughs> as I can during the season. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we all know who he is in this room and who, who he is on this team. And anyone outside of here, I, I mean, it's not really taken too too seriously. Well, it might be a no because you just said you stay off the internet, but like, <laughs> have you ever seen the Dan Campbell stuff, biting kneecaps, he drinks like a ridiculous amount of coffee, like, are you familiar with sort of his style? A little bit, right? Like, he's an ex-player, and that just sort of comes with uh, territory, I think, a little bit, um, especially when he was playing. I mean, he, he definitely played in a different era of football, so. What kind of difference do you see in a coach who also was a player versus maybe a guy that didn't play? Um, really, it's just the lens that he looks through. Um, guys who have played, I mean, I've, 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 I've had it both ways. I've had player coaches and I've had coaches that really haven't played past high school or college. And really it just comes down to the lens that they have and just kind of how they see football. Um, there's a lot of coaches that see it as a business, a lot of coaches that see it as uh, X's and O's and that sort of thing on paper. And there's also a lot of coaches that have that uh, emotional side as well that, you know, players have. So. It is, it is kind of nice to have a balance of both. Jawan Jennings blocked a Green Bay Packer into the, into the Gatorade bucket. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, like, what's yeah. that like as a lineman? Like, do you feel like he's kind of like one of us? And that's, I mean, all these wide receivers block, but Jawan really yeah. gets after it. No, I mean, every single receiver on this team blocks. They, if they don't, they're not on the team. <laughs> so, um, you know, we really take pride in that on this offense. Every single person has to do their job. If that's, a, you know, digging out a safety in the C or D gap, then that's what they got to do. Um, and Jawan, embodies that mentality and it's awesome to see. How much fun is it to block for Christian McCaffrey? Because he give him a little bit and he can go. Yeah, I mean I I've, I've said this probably a hundred times now. He's arguably the best scat back in the league. He's so versatile. Um, and he's just such a weapon on different fronts where, you know, you can really do whatever you want with the guy. So um, having him on your side of the ball is sweet. What do you learn about Brock Purdy makes your job easier? Um, really his just his decisiveness right the fact that he's so assertive in the in uh, the huddle he commands our attention and he just does a great job of getting ev everyone on you know the right page and uh, make sure that we're doing the right things um, you know I feel like his execution too has been great do you remarkable for a 24 year old to be doing that yeah for sure I mean you really don't see young guys doing that especially guys that aren't drafted in the first round or second round or whatever but you know I feel like he's done a really great job of just um, you know doing his part do you recall him um, I'm sorry do you recall uh, Trent speaking up um, before that final drive and, and saying now's the time we've got we've got to score here yeah yeah I mean we all knew exactly what the deal was um, our our offense was kind of hot and cold a little bit throughout the entire game, and we knew that we just had to handle business. We had to eat a lot of the clock up, and we had to get first downs, um, and that's what we did. We went out there and got, you know, you know, the crucial, consistent offensive play that we, you know, that we've been seeing from this offense for the whole season, and we just had to go out there and make sure we had one more score. Is that unusual for him to to speak? I mean, how how often does that happen that one guy sort of? 
talk to the huddle. No, I mean he speaks when he needs to speak. You know, he's a, uh, you know, he's a vocal leader. And he's also a very physical leader. He leads by example every single day. But he also, you know, when we need or when he thinks we need to hear something, he'll definitely say something. I noticed on the Last 49ers one. posted a mic'd up of the game, and you were very vocal before the game uh, in firing up the offensive line. Is that something that you've kind of embraced a, a little bit more of a vocal leadership role before games? So we don't normally have access to, to that, so it's the first time I saw that. Yeah, I mean, a little bit. Um, you know, ever since I signed this contract, I've, I feel like I have a little bit more own, ownership on the, at, you know, at least the offensive side of the ball. Um, and yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's not really an emotional game for me. It's more of just, uh, hey, you need to get your job done. But at the same time, I feel like there is something to be said before a game and to your guys because it is a team effort, especially an offensive line, making sure that, you know, we all know exactly what we're doing on that day. Thanks, Jake. Thanks, Appreciate Jake. it. Good luck. I think the secondary and specifically like him and Mooney get the recognition that he feels like they deserve. Where do you rank them in the league amongst cornerback duos? Man, they're the best cornerback duo in the league. I mean, Giamador plays nickel, he plays outside, and he does it at a high level. You know, Mooney plays every team's best receiver, and he does that at a high level. He leads the league in, in PBUs, he has five interceptions, um, he has a lot of tackles, he come up and fit the run, you know, probably the best at doing that, coming up and fitting the run as well. And the same with Diamador, you know, he comes up, fit the run like a linebacker. And these guys just do, it's hard to find out what they don't do. You know, so they do everything at a high level, and I think they deserve way more recognition than what they get now. Jair, Juice last week was very emotional, almost had tears in his eyes. We're talking about getting back to the NFC Championship. To, to know how hard this is, and you're one step personally away from the Super Bowl, what's the emotions like for you as you're close to a, probably a childhood dream to get there? Man, it's, um, you know, I, I kind of, I kind of just, I'm chill throughout the week, man, trying to let, not let them get too high, you know, and uh, I like to let it out all on game day, but there's definitely a lot of emotion going on around this locker room, and guys are ready. How do you imagine that'll be when you step on the field, the music's blaring, the crowd's there? I mean, like, can you, can you, do you envision, you dream of it? I can't even picture it right now. Okay. I dream the moments like this, though, but I can't even picture it right now until I go out there and see it. I just can't wait with, to see what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who are the weapons that the Lions have that jump out on tape to you? Oh, those guys pretty good, man. Those guys got weapons all around, you know. They got um, Gibbs, you know. I think he, he he's very special, man. Um, kind of similar to uh, Alvin Kamara back when um, he was on the Saints and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, him, you know, golf is good. You know, they have great wide receivers with St. Brown. Um, they, they, got a, they got a squad over there. You know, they got some standout players and they do a real good job. Fair, Kyle was pretty clear with us when he said uh, it was, it, Logan played it for your safety, but it was nothing that Jair did. You think he's coming along great, it's all good. Um, was it disappointing that you weren't out there more than you were, or was you understood? Um, I, I got a pretty good understanding, you know, of, of what was going on. Um, you know, I'm all for the team. You know, what Kyle thinks is best, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with it. Whether I agree with it or not, I understand it. You know, and um, I, me personally, I didn't agree with it. Um, but, you know, I understood Cal, and I understand the mission of this team. And as uh, long as we can get the win, you know, and however I can help the team out, I'm all good. I'm all good. Put stuff aside when you get to the Yeah, it's not, it's not personal. Nothing's personal, you know. Um, whether you can feel that in your own chest, you know, that it's personal or not. But it's, it's nothing personal in this league. It's all about the win. Jay, yeah. what have some of the veterans said about the experience of playing in the NFC Championship? Um... I haven't really talked to too many guys, you know, you know about it, but um, just hearing these guys around, you know, listening in on their conversations, you know, uh, these guys pump, man. They've been here, you know, what three times, and um, haven't came out on top, so they, they're ready to go and show the world. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how often you're on social media or see clips about whatever they say about Brock Purdy, but does it anger you at all a bit when when you know how good he is? I've been dealing with, you know, similar things that Brock's been dealing with, you know, and um, man, it, it's it's so it's so weird, you know. Like you can put it all on tape, you know. You can do everything you do. You can do things just as great as the the other quarterbacks in the league or in my position, other safeties in the league, and yet they still, you know, put doubt on your name. And um, you can't worry about that as a player, though, man. You just got to go out there and, and keep playing. And and once you win a Super Bowl, then what they can say about it, you know. So. Uh, definitely, definitely weird what they got going on with Brock, but you know it's all part of the game, man. 
Shire, have you ever seen the Dan Campbell clips of, you know, they want to bite kneecaps and he's just kind of like an aggressive coach. Like, what do you think about that style of coaching and some of the stuff he says? I mean, uh, I'm not a part of that culture. You know, I don't know Dan uh, personally. Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's all, you know, motivation for his guys and um, trying to get them riled up and, and get ready for this game. Um, I don't think it's nothing personal to it, you know, nothing like that. Uh, he's just trying to motivate his guys and uh, get them in the best mindset as possible. Has Kyle ever walked in here and, and said something like <laughs> as raucous as that before? <laughs> nah, I never heard Kyle say nothing like that. But, uh, yeah, nah, I never heard that. No. How would you guys even react? Like, would that almost like, would you laugh? Yeah, We'd probably laugh at it. You know, um, nothing, nothing's personal in this league, man. Nothing's personal, and I don't think what Dan says is personal either. So. Um, just all, you know, to get the guys going, man. When, you, when it's time to go to war, it's time to go to war. You know? Kind of swag does Kyle Shanahan have? I mean, I see how he dresses. I know he likes hip-hop. Like, he like hats. Different. He like hats. Yeah. He always got a hat on. He, he, Kyle a cool dude, man. He a real cool dude. He funny. His sense of humor he has a great sense of humor. Um, funny in his meetings, you know, very relatable to the guys. Um, uh, he, do, he does a great job, you know, as our head coach, and I like him a lot. Yes. Say it one more time, sorry. Last week, this week, or same? I'm 100 percent. Yeah, same, same as last week. I'm this week. Yeah. Um, honestly, I just feel like I had to get back in the groove of things. You know, me being out at time span, not practicing. Those reps are important during this time, and um. This week, I'm getting them back and just getting back in my rhythm and things. Is there anything in particular that you saw when you watched your film that you needed to correct? Just knowing who I am, basically. Um, just believing in me, believing my technique, believing my coaches. That's that's all it was, honestly, for me. Is a lot of it just confidence-based? Uh, yeah, that game, not playing that last game and being out with the hand. Uh, yeah, it was, but, you know, I go against Brandon Ayuk and Debo all day in practice, so... Yeah, I'm gonna be seeing them today, most definitely. Did those reps in that live game help you prepare for this week? Oh yeah, most definitely. Uh, ain't nothing like the live reps. I feel like um, you grow with the live reps. That's why I'm I'm thankful like all that happened to me because this week I know what it is. Every uh, juice was really emotional last week when talking about getting back to the NFC Championship. Mm -hmm. To know how hard it is to get here to be one more game away from the Super Bowl. What are your emotions like entering this one? Um, it's a big one for me, but um. Just knowing that we've been here before, got to treat it like a regular game, even though it is important, but we just got to play our level of ball and not their level of ball, and I believe we'll be fine. What's it like, though, too? I mean, I'm sure as a kid you dreamt about this, playing in the Super Bowl, getting uh -huh. in the Super Bowl. Does it match up to what you dreamt about as a kid? Uh, most definitely, yeah. Um, but uh, these past few years, it just sucked because we've been, like, this close. And this year, like, everyone, like, willing to dig a little bit deeper, find something else to correct and just get us there. Who's a player on this defense that you go to for advice or tips and things like that? I mean, um, Mooney and uh, Fred and Dre Greenlaw, they all keep me in the right uh, mind space. Tyshawn Gibson, um, those guys, like, they keep me right. They keep me level-headed, never too high, never too low. What do you see from Amon Brown? Um, he's a good he's a good route runner. Um, they're going to get him the ball. And yeah, we just got to prepare for him. Is there anything that he does in particular that makes him so difficult to cover? I mean, he's just um, real shifty and he can play inside and outside. He tracks the ball down well, aggressive hands. So he's one of those tougher matchups in the slot. Kyle was talking about the, the difficulty of the play where you, you, you got the penalty when you couldn't turn, turn around in time and he said, look, yeah. you're in no man's land on, the, on a play like that. Is uh -huh. it, what, what could you have done? I mean, honestly, if I just play my game, if I stay on top, I'm picking that honestly. And usually, you look on film, like I'm usually on top of that. That's why I kind of shocked me, but it's that getting back in the groove of things and just filling things out again. Are you able to shake that kind of thing? I mean, you have to have short memory. They always talk about it, but it's uh -huh. easier said than done. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, we play corner. Those guys are good, too. Mm -hmm. You're going to win some. You're going to lose some. But you want to win more, most definitely. How much different are your emotions in that spot, in that game, in the playoffs, versus, like, week two? Um, just knowing it's a, it's a bigger game, and that could have uh, cost it for us. Uh, that could have been, like, the game for us. But, um... It's most definitely bigger, and you just want to be sharper. You want to sharpen the sword by the end. Did anyone come talk to you? Any of the vets come talk to you during the game? Oh uh, yeah, they said um, at the end of the day, I played good enough for us to win, and um, just try to correct the things and good play, bad play, next play type of mentality.
A couple more for Avery. How big is the advantage of playing at home in the NFC Championship? Your crowd behind you getting all wild up when, when the other team's on offense? Oh, yeah, no, it's a, it's a big advantage. Like, home field advantage has been great for us, and hopefully we just take that momentum right into the Super Bowl. How loud were the fans last week? Super loud. <laughs> like, we're talking on the field, and they're loud, and you got to make sure you get the right call. But, yeah, it was amazing. They're supposed to be quiet on offense, but when you're on defense, they're as loud as can be. Does that actually like mess with you guys trying to signal to each other? Sometimes, but we build off that, like we feed off that, like we love that energy in the crowd, so we want that.